ICMP. Um, before you all leave the room and uh, go away because you're saying, hey, ICMP, you'll not see something interesting here, let me just say that using 1 to 4 packets only uh, with speeds like 200 milliseconds to 350 milliseconds, this is what my tool does. So I think the guys that went to go away will now stay. Basically, what we will be talking about is some theoretical analysis. I changed that from Black Hat, so we'll have real-world examples um, along the uh, talk. We will have some interesting sites that I've been scanning in the last three days. Um, so at the end, we will see some Chinese website. Uh, actually pretty cool websites um, and there will be some surprises to see what they are using some of them are government so X is a logic developed again from the various active OS fingerprinting system methods I have discovered using my research uh, Xprob is the tool that actually was released at Black Hat uh, two days ago and is available from our website it was written along with Fyodor Yurkin, he's from the Snore development team, uh, is not the same Fyodor from NMAP, so there are different Fyodors in the world, I guess. Um, the tool automates X, uh, it's version 0.0.1, it works, uh, I'll talk about the limitation later and what will be the future. The logic and the, uh, well, the tool is simple, fast and efficient which I think uh, every tool should be. It's a, still a proof of concept. And in the future, this tool will have some kind of uh, artificial intelligence and failover mechanism. Say, you started uh, scanning using some method uh, and you failed. It will fail over automatically to another logic and eventually it will intelligently identify the operating system. The problem with some tools today especially the open source one, when you do scanning, that sometimes you get inaccurate and inconsistent results. And I'll show some examples. Uh, this is true especially with Windows-based operating systems with TCP, and I will be showing exam examples with Nmap, for example, and uh, how X can solve this thing. So basically, it is all depends where you sit. If you are a penetration tester, you sit inside an internal network, you want to see which operating system you have, this is one thing. If you are an attacker and you sit outside somewhere in the internet, uh, say outside of firewall, sit here, this is another thing. So you may be having to use some different protocols or some different probes or some different techniques it depends where you sit. Sure, it depends on the firewall and what it lets in, but eventually you'll need to, to use something intelligently. For example, if you have a firewall, you will not expect to see uh, traffic flying in for, for UDP ports which are not used on targets inside the uh, uh, internal networks, or you, be, you will be filtering heavily if you're doing it uh, good. But if you are inside a network, it changes the picture. And usually, between internal segments, you can uh, use ICMP because um, management or IT management need to see the availability of operating systems because they are lazy to get their fat asses from the uh, uh, seats and go up to Mrs. Robinson up in the ninth floor just to see she plugged off her Ethernet cable. About the license, license in GNU, the code is available, but all material is for non-profit educational use only. So if you want to use this for commercial stuff, you need to talk to me. 
if you guys want to use that and you're not using it for uh, commercial usage and if it's education um, you can download it from my website again uh, the tool uses one to four packets and I'll show you how it does it okay uh, the logic starts with a UDP datagram so sent to definitely closed UDP port uh, I send some data inside the data portion of the uh, packet it is up to 70 bytes of data inside the offending packet why definitely close UDP port it's definitely closed so I can get the port unreachable so how, how I can pick a definitely close UDP port one of the examples will be go to the uh, YANA list for assigned ports and get yourself some ports and then randomly when you use the tool use random ports that are eventually needs to be closed now a closed UDP port send you a port unreachable if you don't get the port unreachable you understand there is a firewall filtering you and you may, you may fail over to another logic we will see an example when we will talk about windows based operating systems uh, Jeff Moss let me play with defcon.org so you can see how I can do failover and identify defcon.org using a failover mechanism um, so we have a way to identify firewall presence and if we receive back a reply we play we will be using um, a nice uh, fingerprinting uh, thing with some operating systems and networking devices when they send an error message they send the preceding bits which is part of the type of service byte as you can see here set to the value of six decimal which is C0 hex this means that Linux play the role of a router like RFC 1812 states that router has to uh, do well I don't know why Linux does that but if we want to um, differentiate between Linux kernel 2.0.2.2.2.4 and Cisco routers and extreme network switches we will look at echoing integrity problems inside the echo data uh, I don't know how many of you know but with an ICMP error message certain amount of data from the offending packet is getting echoed back with the error so you can understand which uh, packet caused the error um, the IP header and at least eight data bytes are echoed back there are some operating systems and networking devices that will echo more for example we have here Linux uh, we'll see that in the next slide that echoes nearly everything that will give him and on the other hand we have Cisco and extreme networks that uh, echoes only a data bytes so basically using another internal test not the test that I need to repeat I can differentiate between the Linux bunch and the Cisco and extreme network bunch if I want to differentiate furthermore between Cisco and extreme networks I can let look at the UDP checksum header uh, for the header with the extreme networks it will be zero with Cisco it will be echoed correctly so basically using one datagram I'm able to identify Cisco routers using iOS 11x or 12x and extreme network switches um, if I look at the Linux bunch I will be uh, defining it according to the IP time to leave field value uh, Linux 2.0 uses 64 the others using 255 and using another query which makes two queries to the Linux 2.2 and 2.4 I can look if we are having uh, IP ID set to zero which is a common problem with IP ID with Linux 2.40 to 2.44 and therefore I can differentiate between Linux kernel 2.2 and 2.45 to Linux kernel 2.40 to 2.44 so using only two datagrams uh, I was able to get um, Linux 2.2 access and 2.4 access using one datagram I was able to get a Cisco the extreme networks and the uh, Linux 2.0 now if you will look at the real world example look here it's a real IPs uh, port scanning is legal 
And I would like to thank Jenny for granting for the legal advice. Yeah, well. Um, we can see the first query. First parameter to check is the preceding bits set to C0 here. Uh, we can see that the uh, data portion, well, the data echoed, sorry, it's a mistake here. Uh, no, sorry. This is the data echoed really from this point. We can see that everything that was sent inside the data portion of the, uh, the offending packet got echoed here. And you see the time to leave is 255, so we basically differentiate it as 2.2 or 2.4. And we send another ICMP echo request. The IP ID is not zero, then this is 2.2x to or 2.45. Now will you say foobar, right? You'll not believe me. So this is redhat.com. And now I might be getting more acceptance. Wait until you see the Chinese sites. This is actually X running. You can see first test here, first test here. All the trees are like internal tests that I showed you before. And it identifies at 2.2x to 2 or 2.45. Now, if I use Nmap, I get the same results. Um, I get more packet sent, three seconds, and I get 2.212 to 2.219. Here, I was using, um, if you look closely, uh, nearly 300 milliseconds to get the same results. So if we go back now to the main branch of the, uh, of the tree, we can now look at another parameter. Uh, how much echoing data is given with the error message? We have three groups. The groups that echo back eight, eight data bytes, a group that echo only 64 by default, and a group that echo everything. Here is Linux. He echoes everything like the other uh, networking devices and uh, boxes here, but we identify it again. This is like uh, if we have some kind of a shaping, uh, traffic shaping device, and is placed with the uh, preceding bits, and if he fails to identify Linux in the first uh, stage, then it will identify Linux here as well. Let's look at the main branch here at San Solaris, HPUX, and Mac OS. Again, very simple test to differentiate between them, and if you didn't know that, Mac OS 7X to 9X, X like HPUX 11X. So they both bought the TCP IP code, I guess, from the same company. Uh, no twice thing to do. Um, I was able to play with Mac OS 9.1 at Black Hat, and I would like to thank Chris from Seagate for letting me abuse his box. Now, if I'm having false results here, if the timestamp here is blocked on the sensor, I was sure it will be identified at HP UX 11. Uh, still, it's, it's just 0.0.1, .0 so in the future we'll have better uh, firewalling tests with other uh, queries as well. Here is an example with San Solaris 2.7. Uh, we can look, the, here is the offending packet, here is the error message. We don't see the preceding bits here, so we are at the main branch. The data portion echoed, if you will uh, count the 58s, it will give you 56, and here is the UDP header, another eight data bytes give you 64. If you now look at the second packet sent, you see that I get, I get timestamp reply, so it, is, it was identified sensor layers 2.3 to 2.8. Um, to play really cool tricks with other printing systems, I'm using echoing integrity problems, mainly uh, using some uh, fields inside the IP header. I have a couple of fields I can play with. Um, I have the IP total length field value, which might, sometimes might be with 20 bytes less or 20 bytes higher uh, than the original. IP ID, because of beta order problems, might be flipped. Um, the IP header checksum might be miscalculated or zero. Um, the three bit flags and offset field values. If I set the DF bit with my re uh, request or with my authentic packet, it might be flipped, so I might be seeing an error message stating I sent a fragmented thing and get the error for, so we'll see how we can use that. And the UDP checksum might be miscalculated or zero. So as you can see, we have a lot of power metals to work with, so how can we use that? 
to slice and dice this uh, correctly. Um, the first parameter we will be using is the IP total length field value. Um, here we can see that uh, we have three groups. The one that echoes the field value with 20 bytes higher than was in the original. Here it's less with 20 bytes and here it's okay. Let's look at the AIX machines. We can see that we have here AIX BSDI, older NetBSDs and Mac OS X server. Well, if you think about them, they are all sharing the same base code, at least the BSDI and NetBSDs and Mac OS X. They are all using the same base code for TCP IP. Again, using some echoing integrity checks, we can differentiate between the X machine here, which uh, miscalculated the IP header checksum, to the one, the other operating system, we just sent zero here as the IP header checksum, and differentiate between this group a bit more, uh, having group one group with little endian problems and the other group with big endian problems. Um, so again, this is only one packet sent, and you can get a range of networking devices, uh, sorry, uh, operating systems that using the same base TCP IP code. After you send one packet, you get the results. Um, here, we might have more networking devices, but the reason I didn't include them, it was like uh, your, grandmother um, your grandmother's printer from 1985, so if you really know what your target is, you will understand that if you are targeting host or networking devices, and in the future I will add everything up. So if you look again at the example, it's not a real world, but I have more of these. Sent against uh, an AIX 3.2 based machine. See one query sent, a UDP query, got the error message, check for the IP total length, got the uh, uh, base groups of operating systems, got the IP header check, got it miscalculated, got an AIX. Well, how much time was used? Uh, 290 milliseconds to get the results. One packet sent, just processing the reply, and I get the operating system. So you can see here, proceedings checked, uh, amount of uh, data bytes echo checked, IP total length field checked, um, the echoed value 118, and it was only 98. So one packet, 290 milliseconds, you get AIX. Someone got any question until that point? Until this point? Yeah. The implementation is publicly available, yeah. So here's a way how we can identify OpenBSD 2.6 2.9 quite easily with one packet as well. Uh, from 2.6 uh, with OpenBSD, the IP total length hack code is less with 20 bytes than the original. Uh, I don't know why they are doing it, but it's a problem. There are some other operating systems and networking devices doing so. We look at another uh, echoing integrity check. Here's the UDP checksum checked again. Uh, we get here NFR IDS appliance, which basically is OpenBSD with some minor changes. Uh, it echoes the UDP checksum badly. We can identify it here. Um, we have basically two operating systems here, which can we do another echoing integrity test and get the OpenBSD 2.6 to 2.9 uh, quite fast. So if we look at another example, we can see that, again, one test here and some internal test for the uh, reply I'm getting. So pretty fast, I'm getting OpenBSD 2.6, 2.9. Here is the example, uh, 310 milliseconds after sending the um, request, I get the reply, you can see proceeding zero, amount of uh, data by code here, uh, IP headers, checksum, and UDP are correct, and the only parameter which is bad is the uh, total length field value. So again, gives you pretty fast, uh, gives you the OpenBSD 2.8 to the group of uh, 2.6 to 2.9. So I was looking to do other tests with uh, uh, some good um, um, uh, methods. Again, one good method is three beats flags and offset field value. 
if you set it to a certain field value, it will flip between them with FreeBSD 2.2x to 4.1 and NetBSD 1.3x group. Um, for example, here, if we are going to uh, check what will be done here, you can see that this group will flip the uh, beat order and Ultra just sends zero. We can see uh, a demonstration here. It's a free VSD 4.0 machine. We send one datagram. It passes all our checks. We see that the frag bits are flipped, and we are doing another internal test, which basically involves looking at the IP header checksum echoed, which is zero with all free BSDs, and we get free BSD very fast. Again, 350 milliseconds, one packet sent, internal test, and you get free BSD 2.2x to 4.1. Basically, your reply, with your reply, it's like looking at a fragmented um, packet you have sent with your offending packet. What this basically was, the DF bit was set here, it was flipped, so it's parsed differently with the TCP dump. Now, this is what causes the UDP checksum, sorry, the IP header checksum to be bad as well, if you can see it from the TCP dump trace. So until now, we just uh, quickly went through the um, uh, most basic U Unix uh, operating systems. We saw that uh, with one or with two packets, we are able to identify pretty fast uh, operating systems. Uh, just as a reminder, this is all also automated with a tool. Now I needed uh, an ultimate test to differentiate between Microsoft-based operating systems to Unix-based operating systems. This was actually my first uh, post about trick about ICMP stuff. What happens with Microsoft-based is if you set the code field, there are type field and code field, which defines the type of ICMP message you are sending or receiving. If you play with the code field and you send uh, a field value which is different than zero with your request, with your ICMP echo request. The reply with Microsoft based operating systems will set the uh, this uh, field to zero. Now the RFC states that you only have to change the type, um, recalculate the checksum, and send the error message back. Well, I guess at Microsoft they wanted to play God, so they changed that to zero and send back the uh, echo reply. So we are able to identify each and every Microsoft-based operating system according to this little fingerprinting um, mechanism. I loaded up another test with it, which uses preceding bits. I will refer it a bit later, and the DF bit. Let's look at the uh, Microsoft branch. After understanding from the uh, the ICMP echo reply that this is belongs to Microsoft, I have some unique test identifying this. We'll look at the IPTTL. Uh, with Microsoft Windows 95, they are using 32 as the uh, default field value for uh, that field when they send the echo reply. It is unique uh, between the Microsoft-based operating systems. And others are using 128. Now, you will remember I put the value inside the preceding bits with my ICMP echo request. What will happen is that there are some operating systems that will not echo back my preceding bits, which I have set it with my request. What will happen is, guess what? Microsoft Win2K, SP1, and SP2 will not echo this field value. So what will happen, it will allow us to identify Win2K uh, versions quite easily just after two packets sent, looking at the TTL, looking at the code field, TTL, preceding bits are zero. Here we go with Win2K after two uh, packets. The other Microsoft based running system, which are the older one, and I'm not referring to Microsoft Windows for work groups, um, 95, uh, sorry, 98, 98SE, ME, NT, SP3 and less and now NT4, NT, sorry, NT4, SP4 and above are here. So we can differentiate between them as well, but let's look at the example with Win2K. 
This is a real world example with uh, Win2 KSP2. Um, you can see here uh, proceedings checked, amount of data echo checked, uh, total length is fine, and we play another. Uh, we check another criteria here. The DFBT is not echoed at all with our reply and is not flipped. Here you can see that. So basically, we need to send another packet. If we're now sending it, you can see, where is that? Here, that I set a certain field value inside the code field and I got back zero. And I set a certain field value for the proceeding bits. Here it says sex hex and I didn't, rep rep well, I didn't see it back with the reply, it wasn't echoed. So, this was Wimbledon.org. I wanted to see Anna Kornikova. Um, so I went to Wimbledon.org. Yeah, go tennis. And this is what I got there when using Win2K up there. Here you can see the actual uh, X running on Wimbledon.org. Two tests, all the internal tests get you Windows 2K uh, pretty fast. Uh, if we do banner grabbing, just to prove you guys that this is uh, Windows 2000, here you get a great application running there called IIS 5.0. And just I type Go Tennis, a couple of enters, and you get that. So I wanted to differentiate between the entire group of Microsoft based operating systems. Um, basically, we're all dependent here upon. Uh, replies we are getting from our hosts. As you will see uh, in the next two examples, well, they give us what we need. Here we send an ICMP timestamp request differentiated between two groups, the NT4 and 9898SCNME. For another address mask, I'm able with a reply to identify 9898SE and ME, which does not reply. With the second address mask for the NT box, I am able to differentiate between NTSP3- and NTSP4+. Plus. So let's see some examples. Skip. OK. Let's see that, that example. I will not skip it. I have four tests here, as you can see. And internal logic is being used here. Identify the uh, Microsoft Windows family TCP IP stack and gives me NTSP4+. Plus. As you can see from the trace, this is again, I'm, see, I'm looking, I see that I don't qualify for any of the tests I'm using. I'm using an echo request, set the code to one, three, uh, one two, three, get the code zero, set the type of service to six, get the uh, type of service back. This means this is not Win2K machine. Sending a timestamp request, an address mask request, doesn't get any reply. So this is WinNT4, SP4, and above. So if you guys will not like my talk, I might join the uh, French Foreign Legion and ran away for a couple of years. So if you just look at what I got after I type uh, www.frenchforeignlegion.org, I got a nice error message. Dot ASP. Well, guess what this is. Um, if you give us your name and email address, we might call you for duty. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, here is actual uh, screenshot. You can see X running on my box. French foreign legend running Windows NT4 SP4 and above. Now. If you don't believe me, uh, this is Nmap. I was trying to do OS fingerprinting and give actually Nmap an open port that I, c I can tell Nmap to use less traffic initiation to identify that machine. But guess what? This didn't help in this case. Uh, and I didn't get anything back. So I was actually telling Nmap, OK, do whatever you want to. And here, after. 1,500 packets after. I can get uh, basically problematic results, as you can see. NT4 or Win95 or Win98 or WinNT4 SP3 or 
Win NT uh, 4, server SP5, and the hotfixes. Um, this is not accurate, but if I can, for example, this is a, a good example to understand that if we can tell the tool that we are going to a web server, then port 80 is open. I don't need it to port scan the operating system if I, for example, want to use an IIS exploit, right? So, I told you I'll get to defcon.org. Thanks to Jeff for letting me do that. Uh, I like the design. Um, defcon.org, basically what it uh, gives me is the ability to show you why I need a failover mechanism. Well, because I'm sending a UDP datagram to a closed port and I need the ICMP port and reachable, uh, Jeff kindly uh, closed down the uh, UDP stuff. I want to thank him for giving me hard life here. But if I'm just using the uh, Windows portion of the tree as a query only mechanism, this means that, let's go back a bit. If, for example, I start and use the, um, yeah, I've been here. I send the code field set to zero, set to a value different than zero, and I get a reply with the code zero. And I can play only with the Microsoft base tree. Now I have to get back. Oh, I didn't think it's frightening the kid. Okay. I'm struggling here. Okay, so if I'm doing the same tests, I'm able to state that Mr. Moss is running NT4 SP4 and above, and it actually was shut up. And it was actually cross referenced with Jeff. Yeah, if you try to play on that website, you'll have to deal with me. So, as a courtesy to Jeff, here are the traces. Um, you can see code field is not echoed, proceedings, proceedings are echoed, so basically it gives you uh, the other Microsoft-based operating systems. Uh, it doesn't answer timestamp requests or address mask requests, which are allowed on the box, and this is NT4, SP4 and above. This is Nmap, again, trying to give Nmap a port to work with, and it gives me Win NT4, Win95, Win98. Um, trying to uh, not to give any port, and it generates in two minutes here uh, this result. Well, you saw that before. So basically, it's sure it tells me it's Windows, but it doesn't let me understand what is the Windows box I'm attacking or probing or auditing. So, we can do a lot of stuff more than that. If we're going back to the main branch, we can do a lot of other tests. I have set the uh, DF bit inside the echo request, and I'm expecting several operating systems, when they generate the ICMP echo reply, to put the DF bit there, even though if they are not usually doing so. This means that if I send the ICMP echo request without the DFB, the DFB will not be set with the reply. So there are some operating systems will just, you know, flip around the uh, IP addresses, uh, do their recalculating, change the type, recalculate checksum, and send back the results. There are some other operating systems which are more intelligent and will build up a new packet. Uh, I don't know if Novell or World Tricks are that intelligent, but uh, here, they didn't echo DDF bit, and we are able to identify them both because of the TTL. We can do other tests like this with the error with the DF bit and identify uh, NetBSD, uh, the newer versions, and 2.4, 2.5 OpenBSD, and older OpenBSD as well. So basically, this is uh, still here is two packets. With the NT4 stuff, it was up to four packets. With Win2K, it was two packets. With Win95, it was two packets. Uh, so very small amount of packet sent, and you see how fast the replies getting back and the calculation is being done. Um, if I still on the main branch, I can send an ICMP information request and try to 
identify DGUX, for example, different uh, different DGUXs, HPUX, 10X, um, and uh, OpenVMS. I will not go through that because you all can read that from my website. I want to show the uh, examples. Now, this is example with uh, DGUX 5.6. We have three um, three datagram sends here. One is UDP closed port, ICMP echo request with various tests and information request, which is get a response for that, and we can see another test and gets it as a DGUX. Again, we do our magic here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And basically, get the results. Uh, it's 632. Yeah, basically, 600 milliseconds after three packets sent, uh, all the process on the replies. So, 600 milliseconds, you get DGUX 5.6. So, the rest of the tree, so I can say I cover FreeBSD 4.125. Uh, might be unreliable according to our target. If we are targeting an operating system and we know that we are targeting an operating system, for example, if we target, well, our next nice example would be a known uh, a website. Um, we know that we are not targeting a networking device which might be giving us false results here. So basically, if we will follow the logic here and here, we will be might able to look at uh, the FreeBSDs now. If you didn't know, FreeBSD 5.0 change its uh, IP TTL field value with the replies to 64. Guess some didn't know that. So, you all know Nessus, right? Who doesn't know Nessus? Okay, this main Nessus site. Um, basically, what the tool gives me here is that I checked all the uh, logic, and this is some kind of a Unix. The logic goes and stops at that point because of accuracy problem with the networking devices. Now, if you look closely at what we have received back, uh, we can see that we have the UDP header checksum set to zero here, and the time to live 64 was set to 64 initially here. Now, if we go to the logic, we can see that the IP header was okay, the IP ID was okay. We go down, the UDP checksum header was zero and the TTL was 64, so it needs to give us FreeBSD 5.0. Now, this is Nmap. I guess it needs to, it needs to insert the TTL thingy. Uh, gives us FreeBSD 4.3. Questions until this point? No questions. Yeah. To have this example working, I have uh, it's hard coded, but 0.0.2, which is scheduled soon, will have its own fingerprinting database and a logic that will uh, work dynamically with some uh, nifty tricks in the uh, database. So what we'll have to do only is to uh, put more fingerprinting inside the tool and run it independently. Sure. So people can tell, can send me uh, fingerprints. Yeah, well, if, if you'll be at the end of the uh, slides, there is slides about this. Thank you for reminding me this. So I was thinking what websites can be interesting for myself to look and might interest you guys. Um, I went for one of the American favorite nations, uh, the nation that uh, denied of service, the Navy, uh, China. So um, in order to uh, look what is so good at China, and to see if they need some tech guys. I went to um, the Communist Party newspaper. 
I went to People's Daily. Now, what is so nice about the uh, Chinese newspaper is that everything is so cool in the world. Here you see Chinese uh, NBA player doing some good stuff, and all the news are so good, and everything is cool, so cool in the world. Okay. So I sent, I fired away X on People's Daily. One packet got me back People's Daily using OpenBSD, something between 2.6 to 2.9. Okay, they was they weren't wise enough to use OpenBSD, but why not firewall UDP? You can see here why um, this traced back to. Uh, OpenBSD, the IP total length field value is 20 bytes less than it was with the offending packet echoed 20 bytes less and the other fields are okay. So this is OpenBSD 2.6, 2.9, one packet sent and you see the link to China. Man, I now understand why the denial of service in the Navy. This is, look at the, how many milliseconds it took, like 360 milliseconds it took the reply to get back and for me to identify peoplesdaily.com.cn. So, after looking at the newspaper, I was thinking, if it's so damn nice, let's get us something cool at Beijing. Why not buying some mics? The microphone uh, store at Beijing. But before that, try to do the same thing with Nmap. Failed. Um, nine minutes after, uh, didn't get any results. So it shows you that sometimes TCP is not enough and we need to fail over or use something else. So I went to Beijing, 7 iron Audio. I wanted that mics, man. So there is a, some kind of a microphone here, dynamic microphone, wireless microphone, and other pro audio devices out of Beijing. So, I bet they have some kind of a online orders form. I went and tried to identify what it ran on and gave me a Linux 2.2 or 2.4. Uh, two packets here, you can see. Very nice, I mean, for a audio shop. Here is the same results with uh, Nmap gives the um, the accurate results, but again the amount of uh, packets I have to invest in order to get the results is about 1,500 if I don't specify the open ports. It was so damn nice. Uh, I was so satisfied with the, with the microphones, so I wanted to do buy myself a car. Was I mean the car? carguy.coms.cn why don't we have a ferrari here with this we have this engine car i don't get it but there was a super awesome cool animation here that you don't see that gave it away as a you'll see what it is as a microsoft windows nt sp4 plus based uh, box the animation was so ugly so i spared you uh, four packets sent really fast, uh, identified as uh, WinNTSP4. Here again, sorry for all the comparison with Enma, but it's the tool that nearly everybody uses. Here again, uh, I get several results, which the tool is not able to identify different TCP stuff between Microsoft-based operating system. And it's not just Nmap, it's other tools that are based on TCP only. Nearly TCP only stuff. After all, I was sort of satisfied with my car, I went to buy a trailer. <laughs> Look at that trailer, awesome trailer. So I didn't understand anything, but I bet they need you to deposit something before you buy something. Um, so, ChinaTrailer.com uses Linux 2.2 or 2.45. Uh, um, again, um, pretty fast. You have to send two packets and you get the results. This is accurate results. Takes 
more time, more packets invested. What is so nice with uh, this is my train stuff. Um, what is so nice with X, you basically are very stealth because you don't understand what the hell hit you, and you cannot understand that you've been mapped. And now, if if in the future and this is planned, I will add like. Um, real data portion information of a real application. Say I identify DNS service of the organization, I know where they are, and I send this uh, offending packet to UDP 53 and I steal some code from Manus Lookup, and I do lookups and send them to the uh, IP address which is my target. So what are the admins might, might say? Oh, look at that retard script kitty. Thank you, guy, I just mapped you. I don't need anything back from you. So adding some real world data portion to these scans might do um, much more still stuff. And if you can play with the, uh, you say, I want to send my UDP stuff with this and that application my, my, or randomize that, nobody will understand what you're doing. So after I was so satisfied with my trailer, I went to buy a train. Uh, up in Mongolia, uh, there is a website called im1mgt.com.cn, uh, which basically bids you, builds you a train. I was so impressed. Running on Win2K, SP1 or SP2. Um, again, two packets and I get the Win2K identifier. Um, well, look at that. You want to buy a train or you want to owe the world? <laughs> if you look down, this is quite amazing because, hey, we are running black eyes here. <laughs> and we are ultra cool with, with all these uh, open ports. Uh, we have FTP, HTTP, HTTPS. Ah, we play Doom here, man. <laughs> Does your management know that? Uh, so basically, um, uh, I try to uh, map these uh, websites with and map as well. Uh, I guess I'll chat with Fyodor about giving some other kind of uh, intelligence inside Nmap so we can easily um, identify some Microsoft-based operating system because if you are using the defaults thing with Nmap, it sends echo requests. So if we play with some parameters, uh, I might be uh, doing that a bit better and we can have it the results bet better than that. So here you can see that this is IIS5 Win2K so you can just believe me that it is the train stuff. Okay after the train uh, I saw that stuff in China is so cool so I wanted to see how many childs I can have in China if I want to move there. StateFamilyPlanning.com. Look at that awesome view. This is what you see from your room when you. Okay, well, I'll stop here. Okay, so what they are running? Oh, Windows 2000. I guess they know their shit. I mean, oh yeah. This is FTP, SMTP, uh, well, IRC, but dude, he's IRCing the world with a server, so everybody from the world can ask the same question and get real-time answers. Um, again, Nmap really failed to differentiate between 2000 and ME. Um, so, after I saw China is so damn cool, um, I can have whatever child I want. Yeah, sure. I can buy my trailer, my truck. Uh, I can buy a train. I can buy my microphone cheap. And I can have my favorite communist newspaper on the web. I wanted to go to China so bad. So, my last example. If I want to go to China, I need to get myself a visa, right? So I went to China Foreign Office. This is the English, English side of the China Foreign Office, uh, which it tells you that uh, what was there. 
Um, yeah, we met with President Bush. Yeah, it's so cool. And we just uh, had a visit or Colin Powell would visit us and blah, 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 and a bunch of stuff that really helps you get to China. And they really updated their website uh, July 10. Okay, leave them alone. I guess they're running Windows 2000. You want to see what ports are open? Here you go. Mm. Well, just as a reminder, this is a byproduct of the Nmap uh, scan. The real cool thing is that I scanned it with two packets, man. It's just to see the ports, the uh, NetBIOS SSN stuff, well, gee. Don't we need updates from home? Uh, and PC Anywhere. You know, if someone really important comes to China and we need to update it immediately. <laughs> I hope the admin will stay alive after this talk. <laughs> so, I guess my name will be up up front on the list of the people who will not visit China in the next couple of years. <laughs> and I will need to get a visa to get to China, so. These were just uh, port scans and uh, scans with my tool, just to show you up that in order to get accurate results, you don't need to puke in the network, you can do it wisely. Now, how wisely you can do that? Um, for all the operating systems, it's, it is listing here. One query, two queries, three queries, four queries, and the tool is just 0.0.1 without a failover mechanism. Um, so I guess it's pretty cool. What do I have to do next, or what do I have to implement, and I'll do that fast. Um, I need to put some firewall checks, more firewall checks, um, and I need to do the logic thing, and I need to add uh, DB support and fingerprinting DB, more logic, failovers, artificial intelligence, and you saw that this is working, so, oh, well, what will happen with 0.0.2? This is an open source project. Uh, in the next couple of days, there will be a page stating if you want to uh, send me some information or fingerprints about the stuff you, you want to show me or you want to donate hardware because I have only two boxes. Um, and when installing 15 operating systems in four hours to just check something, it's not that nice. Um, if you'll go to my website, you can go and download the tool. Um, this is uh, the last thing I added between Black Hat and DEF CON. Everybody is doing host detection, port scanning, DNOS fingerprinting, and then exploiting. This is dumb. Why? Because if I'm doing the OS fingerprinting in my style, if, for example, I'm using Win2K and I need to exploit IIS, and I'm not endorsing it in any way, um, no, really. So um, I can understand that I have Win2K in two packets. And for example, if I know my, what is my target, for example, a web server, I can send the exploit right away. So in three or four packets, I own the box. And um, this is really cool because with the other stuff that is being done today, you only scan to understand your operating system, which, which, cause, which you send a lot of uh, packets, and basically it's not stealth. But if you do the opposite way, using the stuff I showed you here, three to four packets, you owe the box. So just think about it. X is available from my website. Soon there will be uh, a page for X problem source forge will be a daily CVS. Well, uh, 0.0.2 will be unreliable for a lot of time until we'll stable it, and it will be available from uh, Fyodor Yerokhin website as well. So we'll have four mirrors for that. Um, the failover mechanism uh, was implemented by a simple nomad. Uh, I didn't check, verified it until the end, so I might rewrite uh, that part again. Um, Acknowledgement, and this is important, so bear with me. I'd like to thank DT here for having me for the last year at the Black Hat World Tour. Uh, 
J.D. Glazer, who was uh, pressuring me to do the window thing, and it's evolved from there. Simple Nomad and uh, Todd Sabin for the time. Uh, they gave me last year here at DEF CON, who would talk to me and uh, um, basically listen to all my uh, mumbo jumbo when I did not have in, uh, really stuff in hand. Fyodor Rorachin for helping me implement the stuff. Marty Roach from Snort for uh, putting stuff uh, at, at Snort. Jennifer Granick for the legal advice. The, the people that send me emails and help me out with my uh, research. Um, and basically, you people for attending here. Again, thank you, DT, for having me. Thank you, guys.